Welcome to the video basics of using CodeApp. Here we will be exploring an online statistical software tool called CodeApp. You can access CodeApp at any time at codeapp.concord.org. CodeApp stands for Common Online Data Analysis Platform. This is an open sources software for dynamic data exploration. It is a free educational software for data analysis. This web-based data science tool is designed for platform as a platform for developers and as application for students in grades 6 through 14. If you've never used CodeApp before, check out the For Educators page for free guides, tutorials, and sample data sets. And there are also in that, uh, there's also a set of forums here where you can ask questions um, for help if you need it for CodeApp. So to launch CodeApp, you can go to the codeapp.concord.org site and hit launch CodeApp. Alternatively, you can go to codeapp.concord.org forward slash app, and that will also uh, take you to the CodeApp page. For this example, we are going to use a data set titled Artist that can be found at the following link. I will link this in the video as well. Um, it is tinyurl.com forward slash artist data. This is a data set collected by Holland Stam, a master's student at Duke University, about how much space artists take up in art history textbooks. Um, I also have another URL. Uh, I'll type it here as well. URL.com forward slash artist variables. If you want to see a list of the variables. Whoops. I typed it in wrong. So if you would like to see a list of the variables that are indicated here, I'll bring some of them up. But this is an interesting data set where the um, Holland Stam uh, wrote for her to, uh, thesis for her master's, where she actually measured the space in centimeters of both the text and figure of a particular artist in a given edition of Jensen's History of Art or Gardner's Art of the Ages to see how much space people took in uh, in art history textbooks and then broke it down by different um, predictors such as gender, race, ethnicity, nationality to see how many times they actually appeared in the textbook. So we're going to be using this data set here um, to uh, show you a little bit of how um, CODAP works. So the first thing with CODAP is we want to create a new document. You can hit open document or browse examples to see some example CODAP pages that have been made but we're going to create a new document here. So we can import the data in CODAP in three different ways. The first thing you can do is take your data and save it as either a .csv or a .txt file. So here I'm going to hit save as and download a copy to my computer. And I am just going to put it, uh, I have a um, folder called data. I'm going to call it artist. .xls, but I'm going to actually save it as a CSV. Well, I'm going to save it this way first, and then I'll go in and save it as a CSV file. You can see this can get a little bit clunky, especially when we have to convert things, but it will not import XLSX files. You have to do CSV. So I'm going to hit save a copy, and then here, save it as a CSV file. Um, and I'm just going to put it as new artist, just because I've saved this one several times. All right, so I can do it that way. You can also save it as a TXT file. And now what you can do is you can import the data itself. So if I go back to Kodak, I can go here and hit import, um, and I can find it, or I could just drag and drop it if I wanted to as well. Um, but I'm going to just go back to my folder where I saved that data. I called it new artist. That's CSV and it'll import it very nicely like that. So that's the first option. You can do it as well. Um, you can import it. The second option is you could just simply drag and drop. I'm going to open a new uh, code app page just to show you how I can do that. So I'm going to open uh, the browser that has my data folder in it. Uh, I'm going to minimize this just to make it a little bit smaller. All right, I'm going to find that new uh, artist data that I had. And 
I'm going to take it and drag and drop it directly into there. So drag and drop it that way. And the final way you can actually bring in data itself is if you, um, and I'm going to actually just go back to my artist tab here. You can also just copy and paste the data. So what I'm going to do here is do a control A and a control C, control A, control C to copy all the data. And then I'm going to open a new Kodak page. And hit create to document. If I go to tables and hit new from clipboard, it's going to actually take, I do want to allow that, it'll take the data directly from there. And as long as it's a nice um, clean data set like this with the data uh, already in nice columns and that sort of thing, it's pretty easy to import it and it will bring it right over um, when you bring this. A couple of things to think about when you are preparing your data. Uh, oftentimes I like to make sure that my numeric data is consistent, so I don't. I want to make sure that there's not some that have dollar signs and some that don't. Uh, make sure that those are all in there nicely. Uh, I often avoid having NAs, so you can see here where there isn't data. I often get rid of those and just keep them empty so that everything is the same type of data itself. Um, be consistent with the names, like for instance you can see here white is spelled with a capital W, um, just like with any other statistical software tool, if it was a lowercase w, it would record it differently. So just some of the things to think about as you are looking at the data itself. So I'm going to look at any of these views. I'm just going to leave that there that I had for the data set itself. So before presenting the data, you might want to change aspects of the data table. So here are some things that you might want to think about. For instance, you may want to label variables. If you're going to present this to somebody else, say a classroom or for a project for a class, um, if I hover over each of these labels, it'll show me something else under there. For right now, I don't have anything there. Um, but what I'm going to do is click, I'm going to pick on one of these labels I have. There's this label called Artist NWI here. Um, so I'm, that's kind of confusing, right? So I'm going to go back to here to see what that means. So artist NWI means the non-white indicator for artist race, meaning if the artist is denoted as either white or non-white, so that's a binary indicator instead of just their actual race. I'm going to copy that wording here, and I'm going to click, oops, I'm going to just left click, I right click by accident, and I'm going to hit edit attribute properties. And here I can copy and paste, so control V, that property right into there. Let me get rid of that. Uh, extra space there. And I can change this variable to categoricals because I know it's categorical. It sucked it in as categorical, but I'm going to go ahead and just leave it there. Okay, so now what I can do is if I hover over that, you can see that the uh, description goes along with it. So that's kind of nice uh, to see that there. Okay, so that might be something you want to do um, in CodeApp itself. You may also want to create um, a hierarchy is something that's also an interesting thing we can do in CodeApp. So for instance, this data set was looking at different textbooks based on different years. I'm going to take this variable year and drag it to the outside of this column here. And you can see what it did now is it took each of these numbers and sorted them by year. Now because I am, uh, because we are human, we kind of like to see our years in order. So if I left click on this, I can hit sort ascending from 0 to 9, and it will automatically go from the year 1926, which is the earliest edition of the textbook, to 2020. If I click on each of these, then I can see that they are organized by year. So you can see there are 21 um, artists represented from 1926. I click down a little bit later, 2007 has 166 artists. And one of the final things I'll show you that we can do here is creating a new variable. So say, for instance, I wanted to know the count by year. Um, so in this hierarchical table now, what I could do is click this plus button and add a new variable. And I'm going to call this new variable count, call it whatever you want to, and uh, just hit enter. And then if I click on that gray area, I can hit edit formula. And if I hit count, that is a... Um, formula that CODAP recognizes and I can just hit count with the open parentheses like this and it'll assume that I want me to I want to count what's in that column next to it. So now we can see the count is organized by uh, how many there are so I can actually see quite quickly here how many there are. I may for instance want to sort this instead uh, descending this way right to see this way instead of the numbers and the years. Um, so all types of different things here you can do. Now you can see here that the numbers are um, yellow and the reason they're yellow is similar to how an excel file how it shows us that it has a formula in it you can actually go here and hit delete formula keeping values which will turn it unyellow 
So now it's actually a value in the data set that's not, you can move it around and it's not uh, attached to that year variable. It's completely up to you how you do that sort of thing. Another thing we can do is switch between case card view um, and uh, card uh, table view of the data. So I'm going to hit switch to case card view of the data. And what this does, it shows me all of the different variables I have. I see all of the different artists' names. I have 413 in total. There's 16 editions. There's 52 nationalities represented here, three genders, six races. Um, there's two kinds of books. So this is kind of a nice way to view what those numbers look like. And if I use this arrow, I can actually see what those cases are. So I can see the first person is Arthur B. I'm it slowly, Arthur B. Davies is an American, and I can go through this way. This is kind of a nice way to get an understanding of what the data set itself looks like. And then if I just click back up here, I can switch back to that case table view. Okay. Uh, finally, and the real power that we can use in CodeApp is in creating graphs. So I'm going to show you how we can create graphs uh, quickly and seamlessly. So to create a graph, you're going to choose this graph button here. The table initially has a cloud of dots, each representing a different case in the table. For instance, if I click on this random dot, that's Gustave Moreau, who is here. He's uh, in the 16th edition of the textbook. He's French, he's male, you can see all this. He's actually listed several times um, because each time a person is in a textbook, they're listed differently. So to create a graph of a variable, you're going to left, left click and hold down a variable to drag here. Um, to create a variable. Say for instance I wanted to look at artist race. I'm going to go over here and find the variable artist race and I'm going to drag it here on this axis. Alright, so we can see that there are several artists that are white. Um, probably not surprising in this data set itself. This uh, it looks like it might actually be a nice bar graph. I could actually fuse this into bars so you could see a bar graph. The ruler menu here has lots of different options. Here I can put count and see exactly what those counts are and see those this way. Okay, so that's one thing we can do with the graph. Uh, you can also seamlessly, if you wanted to, for instance, put this on the, uh, to make a vertical bar graph, you could just easily swap it and then it does the count that way. You can even change colors of things if you wanted to down here, change the point size and that sort of thing. So that's a nice categorical uh, picture of the data. You can also change data. Uh, Code app uh, automatically puts the data into alphabetical order, but if for some reason you wanted to put um, Native Hawaiian before NA, you can do that as well. If, say, for instance, you didn't want to have NA on there, I can highlight this whole bar, and I could put a hide the selected cases, and then that one wouldn't be part of the graph either. So that's the other thing that you can do. So that is looking at univariate data. I can save that graph or I can create another graph. Let's say I want to look at the artist race by year to see if there's any change. So I'm going to drag artist race here. And then I'm going to drag race year and put it here on the x-axis. Right, so now what we can see, NA is still highlighted back from when I just chose it. I wanted to hide it. But what you can see here is broken down by year how many of each race is represented. So this is kind of interesting. You can see, for instance, that black or African-American artists aren't mentioned in these books until 1986. Um, you can see that the native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islanders don't come up until 2001. Asian artists are in there from 1926 and white ones are in 1926 as well, uh, but some of the other races don't appear until much later, which is interesting. Um, you can also change the variables instead of dragging. You can also just click on a variable and you can go to cases and you can change the case that way. So I have artist race here. Let's say, for instance, I want to look at that NWI um, one, whether they are white or non-white. So here's another view you could look at um, from that one. And you can again change the graphs there as well. Okay. Um, you can also add descriptive statistics to things if you wanted to. So for instance, this doesn't make too much sense, but you could um, put a mean and a median on this, even though finding the mean and median of the year does not much make sense, but you can see that the mean year for white is this, for nine white is this. I don't know, I'm just kind of showing you that the mean is a little bit higher. It's a little uh, weird to do there, but you can also hit show measure labels and see uh, some different measure labels on the graph itself. Okay, 
so, and you can always, whenever you do, so for instance, I had put this hierarchical graph in here. I'm going to actually delete, I'm going to recover the deleted formula here. I can always take that hierarchical thing and drag it back to the inside here as well. Now I have a count of just how many things there are in total, um, but you can do that as well. Um, another, and let me show you where you could do one where the, uh, the space ratio might make, be one where it makes sense. So the space ratio for page total is how much space each person takes up in a page. And if you look here, I could put now the mean, median, for instance, um, and show measure label. You can actually drag these labels around so you can have a little bit more space. You can see the mean is 0.53, so on average people take up a half a page and 0.41, though there are a lot of outliers here. You can see Picasso, Picasso, Picasso. Picasso takes up a lot of space. What if, for instance, I think, okay, I want to get rid of Picasso. That's kind of a big outlier. So what I could do is actually draw a little box around those data points, and I could click hide selected cases, and you can watch as the mean and median, well, the mean will change a little bit here. Um, and here, this is a great example of how it doesn't change that much since the uh, number of people are so high, right? So if you intend to share a link of your work uh, with your data set, for instance, say you want to tell some sort of data story, in order to do that, um, you can rename the document here, like say for instance, you want to call it artist data or something of that sort. You can see here it's unsaved. So to save your file, you can save it here. You can either log into your own Google account and save it, or save it as a local file. Before saving it, I do recommend you go to share, where it says get link to share view and enable sharing. When you do this, it will create a link that you can share with your audience. So say you're teaching a class perhaps, or you're a student in a class and you're trying to share your work with a professor. You can copy the link here. You can preview the share view here as well. Um, and then when you go to save your file, I always like to do a local file, you can include the sharing information in the download file. So that will only come up after you've done the share option. So once I download it, I'm going to just download it. I'm going to keep it in my downloads for now just so that I can easily pull it back in. So once I've downloaded it, it's going to live here. So say I get out of Code App, there it is. So say it is a .code app page. So if you go to your downloads to try to open this .code app page, it's going to look like gobbledygook. It's going to say, I don't know how to open this. How do you open this file? Because you don't have, there's not a .code app file. So to open it, you're going to go back to Code app and either open document or browse examples this way, or you can just pull it right into CodeApp itself and it will open up your view. And now what you can do is save your work. So say for instance, you come back here and you want to create a new graph. Um, say you want to add a graph about gender and maybe space ratio per page. This is kind of an interesting um, exercise. All right, so there's another graph of space ratio per page and say, okay, now wait, I want to save this. So what I can do now is hit save to a local file. It includes sharing information and download file. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't want to show you that. Um, you can actually go here and hit share and hit update shared view. So now what you can do is update the shared view. Uh, whenever you work in the download of file, you can update the shared view instantly. Um, and then again, you can create a new, uh, get that, yeah, so the link will be updated automatically to whoever has that. I do recommend going ahead and saving it again so you have the save file. So there's all types of other stuff you can do to access um, CodeApp. Uh, there is this textbook that I do recommend. I'll put the link here called CodeApp.xyz Awash. This is a textbook that, an, a free online textbook um, that was authored by Tim Erickson, um, published today. He must have updated it recently. Uh, that goes through a lot of different lessons with CodeApp and other cool data tools. Um, that's a great website. Uh, CodeApp.concore.org for educators has some great um, tools as well. And there was also a, another project called Esteem that created some nice tutorials that you can access too. I'll be sure to put all of those links here. Have fun making CodeApp pages.